be conscious that pulls happen and they, they, they happen very, very uh, aggressively. But the, the, the challenge continues to be the, the word we constantly use every single day, value, right? Where's the value? Uh, RKT looks good, right? We had a lot of call buying coming in RKT. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, a Monday edition of uh, the Axis of Trader.com um, wrap up show. Hope everybody had a, a good trading day. Um, you know, just, just absolutely nuts. Um, just when you think things can't get crazier, they, they got crazier. Uh, I, I think. For all of us who, who trade beta, you kind of guys know, you know, for all these guys who trade like the Amazons of the world, the Facebooks, the Teslas, the Netflix, so forth, and, and Apple, they usually go as a truck. We, if you guys watch this video for a while, you kind of know that they, everything moves in tandem. Today, I felt the first time probably in my career that everything moved in tandem. And at, at some point, it got so aggressive uh, in the first half hour of the day that I actually tweeted out and I said, listen, if today doesn't feel like a blow off top, again, I was sarcastically saying that. I know a lot of people are super sensitive. Shut up, Dan, it's not the top. Nobody's calling for a top, we're just joking, right? But I, but I tweet out, I go, if, if today doesn't feel, if the first half hour of the day doesn't feel like this market is completely on fumes, just, just complete euphoria, there's, they should really change the, the definition of what euphoria is because somebody's going to have to come up with something better. Like everything exploded. The saga with uh, GME, just to give you an idea how, how insane it got, GME went to $160 today. Even a stock like Nokia, okay? Ra raise your hand if you have a Nokia phone, right? Nokia, uh, trading after hours in the five, what, 520s, 530s, Nokia went nuts. You had BlackBerry continue its move. You had AMC. Again, the names that were just constantly just moving higher and higher were just like the cream of the crop or the cream of the crap. And the most ironic part after I tweeted out, and again, sarcastically, of course, that, you know, hey, you know, you should really just be careful. Just absolutely be careful. I, I saw one of the, the ugliest polls. And again, if you were trading intraday, you kind of saw that. We, we saw one of the ugliest pulls that I've ever seen in the NASDAQ 100. And, you know, if you, if you look, this was real, okay? This was absolutely real. The market gapped up, and then you just saw this miserable waterfall of candles. And all these names, a lot of, excuse me, I can't say all these names, but a lot of these names that had these really big runs, and especially continue, they all got destroyed. Like if you look at some of the names that gapped up today, that, that were, looked really, really good. You had the Neos of the world, had this big, big gap up, and just absolutely big waterfall. Same thing with like PLTR, had this really, really big move, and, and nearly just had like a, a seven, eight dollar pullback. So you really got to see, and again, for, for all you guys who you know, really still have the blinders on, you really got a first taste of what happens when you're continuously buying these really aggressive overbought stock and you know stocks over and over and over again. Again, sometimes you'll make money, sometimes you won't. But you saw it firsthand what the ramifications are. Again, they don't, you know, they're not gonna pull 10 cents at a time. They pull. And I started seeing just stock one after another, even a stock like Solo that broke out today went up 20 cents. Again, another euphoric type of move, but it went up 20 cents today and then literally sold off like a dollar, dollar and a half. And you started seeing them one by one by one. And, I, and after at a certain point, you turn around and say, holy crap, I mean, how crazy are people continuously chasing these things? Do they not even see the, like the floor is literally crumbling around there? And, you know, GME, uh, GameStop, and again, not that that's the uh, the, the end all be all, but that thing was like $80 off its highs. Just, just insane. So we really did get a, a test today, or at least a taste today of some of the really aggressive potential drawbacks of a euphoric market. And the market is only going to give you X amount of outs. And, and again, maybe today was the first time uh, you ever experienced a stock getting really, really aggressively pulled. But this is what, a, you know, this is what a euphoric I don't want to use the word top. I, I hate that word. But this is kind of what, what a euphoric pause, right? Or euphoric um, halt 
kind of looks like. And, you know, this time around, people did get lucky. You know, a lot of names did bounce, but a lot of people didn't. A lot of stocks didn't. And the most important part, you have to ask yourself a question, well, how many outs are you going to get? How many times are you going to get bailed out? And, and again, maybe, maybe it lasts again for tomorrow. Maybe it lasts for another day. But it's how many times can you say to yourself, well, I'm going to buy a stock that's up six days in a row, up 150%, everything will be all right. I'll just hold it because, well, the market rewards dip buyers. Maybe they do, maybe they don't. But all you have to look, and, and this was incredibly, incredibly scary. All you have to look is that 11 o'clock in the morning pull on the queues and how a lot of things with it. Um, ironically, and, and I think this is kind of the mantra of at least where my thinking is, um, and we talked about this um, on the video, right? We talked about it on the weekend video. We're looking for stocks that are coming out of the channels or off the bottom, right? Or the mid-tier channels. Like I'm not looking, I, you know, I wasn't looking at you know a GME or some of these crazy stocks, we're we're looking for stocks that are coming in channels. We highlighted Tesla. I mean, I, I think everybody that 860 level on Tesla was pretty much tattooed on everybody's brain for the last week. I've had 860 on literally on watch every day. 860, 860 got rejected twice. 860 got rejected three times. And this time around, all these names that came off a of bottom, they're the ones that had the really big moves today. If you look at Tesla, uh, not only did it take out that 860 level we've been talking about now for literally two weeks, it took out 860, it took out that 863, that 868, took out 885, uh, and traded all the way up to the 900 level. Uh, they report in a couple of days, we saw 1,100 calls uh, for next week, we saw 980 weeklies come in. So Tesla buyers are pretty happy. We'll see what happens with earnings. Uh, nobody knows what happens, what's possibly going to happen with earnings, but uh, they are still bullish on the name. And this you know, channel really got confirmed uh, in a very, very aggressive move. Uh, you had CBAT. For all you guys who did catch it, I missed it. It was CBAT was literally going as we were about to start morning strategy. I know some of you guys caught it. I know I didn't. I know that much. Uh, CBAT, uh, $889 uh, needs to build. That thing went to like $950 like in, in seconds. So here was, the, here was the whole $880 area. Took out $880. Hell, I'm not going to say $950. It went to $1050. Uh, so huge move. If you did catch it, great job, guys. Uh, I unfortunately uh, did not. So that sucked for me. Uh, ORMP. Uh, Another example of a stock coming out of a mid-channel, uh, $6 needs to build. Here was ORMP, right? Here was a $6 or ORMP. Uh, took out the six, went to like 750, just a huge move there. If you guys notice, there's very little beta on these channels because beta is kind of in no man's land. Again, they, they, they had their big run. You have earnings coming out for the next two, three days, uh, spilling over into next week, which are Amazons of the world. So people are kind of waiting to kind of digest to see what these things are. But there, there's other values. You can see uh, there's a lot of value in other places. Uh, BTBT is a very interesting stock. You guys should really keep an eye on that. Uh, there was two buyers. I'm, I'm pretty convinced this was the same buyer. A buyer came in for the February, I, I think about a little less than 2,000 contracts. The February, the February 40 calls, considering that's three weeks away, some dude is literally betting that the stock is going to double in the next three weeks. In this market, yeah. Very possible. Uh, Zoom, we highlighted this uh, in the weekend update. 388 needs to build. Uh, Zoom did its thing today. Did a very, it had, you know, again, these are very, very sneaky channels. We talked about this in the video, and it went, you know, 388 all the way back into the top of the channel. Got rejected, but you're talking about, you know, a $10 move when nobody's really looking at it. That's where the value uh, continues to be. Uh, FTOC didn't trigger, uh, OSTK didn't go nuts. It, it, it didn't go nuts in the regular session. There's some PR that came out after the close, uh, but 70 gave a move. Um, 70 definitely gave a move, uh, traded, you know, traded all the way up to, uh, the 74 area. Now after the close, some PR came out when almost, uh, to 82, you can see how just people just continuously chasing PR after PR. Uh, INSG we talked about as well, 1975.20 needs to build. Here was IN, uh, INSG, took out the 1975, right? Took out the 1975.20, went to almost 22. So you could see just people were just chasing 
uh, all over the place. Uh, BYND was a monster, absolutely monster move. Uh, 144 sneaky, 145 macro needs to build. Here was BYND, and there's, there's just so many of them today. It's like you can go through the, the, the entire feed, and you know, for all you guys who were trading on the feed, you saw it was just madness, one after the other. But here was the 144 sneaky, here was the 145, and Beyond went to 164, just an absolute move. It just sick, just absolutely sick. FUBU uh, went higher, this little one went higher. Uh, JD didn't quite make, maybe it was up like a dollar and change. Space went nuts. There was just so much stuff going on here. Space, right? 35, 85, 36 uh, needs to build. So you had a lot of moving parts today. You know, this thing went to what, 39 today? So you had a lot of moving stuff. Again, our, our biggest challenge for tomorrow and the next day and the following day is number one, just, just really be conscious that pulls happen and they, they, they happen very, very uh, aggressively. But the, the, the challenge continues to be the, the word we constantly use every single day. Value, right? Where's the value? Uh, RKT looks good, right? We had a lot of call buying coming in RKT. There's a big range here, right? If it starts taking out this big range, maybe this thing will go. Uh, BTBT is, is not where I need it to be. It sold off, you know, $2 from this range, but maybe it starts getting above this range. And if somebody's betting that the stock is gonna double in three weeks, shouldn't we at least pay attention, right? Maybe it doesn't go tomorrow, maybe it doesn't go the next day, but something like this, especially with option flow, should at least be on our radar uh, going forward. Uh, names like maybe Gilead, right? Maybe a, a Gilead of the world, not a sexy name, not something that I would turn around and say, hey, you know, look, we should watch this thing. Look at how good, but the chart doesn't look bad at all. And at this point of the game, you know, beggars really can't be choosers. So it's very, very important. Put in the work, right? Put in the work. There's still names that we find every single day that are waking up via some sort of catalyst. But the common denominator every single day is coming out of ranges, uh, not falling for the whole bright lights, big city. This stock is going higher. The next one is going up 90%. We're just literally taking them day by day, trade by trade, and making sure if there is a pull. And, that, and again, we've seen the pull. We've seen it very, very aggressively. Uh, randomly, especially today. But if there is a pull, remember, the first stock that's going to get pulled is not the Gilead. The first stock is not going to get pulled a stock that is just coming out of a range. The first stock is going to get pulled is the GMEs of the world and the you know VXRTs that just had a you know pretty nice move today and all these little names uh, that have these big ranges. So folks, stay safe. I know it's insane. I know it's crazy. All these different superlatives you, you can use uh, you're running out of things, you know, running out of adjectives and verbs and everything and pronouns and everything in between, right? I'm just using crazy names that I've heard my 11-year-old daughter know. I have no idea what these things mean, right? Education. Uh, but more important, folks, just stay grounded. I know it's hard. Uh, everybody wants to be in everything. Every stock is running up 100%, so at least, at least we think. Uh, but more important is just trade under control. Be conscious of your surroundings. And the most important part is trade responsibly. Guys, have a great night. God bless. It's only Monday. Today's only Monday. Can you imagine that? Good night, everybody. Have a great night. I'll see you tomorrow.